And this compilation of archive footage from the 1920s to the 1970s includes historic occasions such as the visit of the Lord Mayor of London in 1939 at the opening of the annex to the Royal Baths, the visit in 1929 of the Duke of York to the Great Yorkshire Show. We see rare footage of Harrogate's coronation celebrations of 1937 and many splendid colour films from the 1950s. Everyday scenes within Harrogate's streets give us rare glimpses of motor vehicles of the time, the old railway station and the variety of fashions worn by its people. Look out too for yourselves, your family and friends as they may well be on this archive film which is altogether a feast of old Harrogate. In 1929, the Great Royal Show in Harrogate was held on the Stray, and an important visitor was His Royal Highness the Duke of York, seen here alighting on the Stray in the company of Viscount Lassels. He was greeted by the town clerk, Mr. J. Turner Taylor, the Mayor and Mayoress of Harrogate, Captain and Mrs. Whitworth, who then introduced them to members of the corporation. Captain Whitworth was quite a formidable character, although a generous one, and it was he who gave Harrogate the magnificent silver salt cellar, which is today the prize of the municipal collections. You can see here too other members of the council, here Councillor Topham, and it's believed that his son shot much of this original footage. In the centre, Harry Bolland, then only in his twenties, who was to give long and outstandingly successful service to Harrogate. The Mayor's procession in November 1929 may be seen here, leaving the old Victoria Baths and passing the George Hotel. There is the town clerk, Turner Taylor, the Mayor Alderman Anakin, and members of the corporation, followed by members of the armed forces, seen here in Bower Road. It was quite a long procession. Watch for the cyclist crossing at random there. Members of the police and fire service, followed by members of the corporation, the councillors and officials. The mace bearer, the mayor and the town clerk, Turner Taylor. Councillor Topham, Councillor Tweddle, Councillor Newsom, and many illustrious figures from this time passing under the Bower Road Railway Bridge on their way to the reception in the spa rooms. In 1937, Harrogate celebrated the coronation of King George VI by means of a splendid procession through the heart of the town. Unfortunately, it rained torrentially, and you can see here the procession and the fairground celebrations in Harrogate at that time.
The fair took place in High Harrogate on the Stray and seemed to be very popular with the local children and their parents and friends. The rain doesn't appear to have dampened the enthusiasm of the crowds, who attended not only to enjoy the amusements provided by the celebrations, but also to participate in the great event of national rejoicing. Here, the procession moves along York Place. The Royal Bath Hospital float was quite spectacular. Our aim to cure and included various treatments then in the hospital. Here, passing the junction with Station Parade in York Place, the great imperial state crown, at least a replica of it, followed by other floats provided by most of the trades and professions of the town. By the time the procession reached the war memorial, still no sign of the rain stopping. And this is the CEA Garden Party held at the Hotel Majestic in the summer of 1937. These crowds are seated on the great terrace outside the Majestic, admiring the latest London fashions being displayed. The weather here has improved considerably over the unfortunate procession of a few weeks before for the coronation of the King. The last big state occasion in Harrogate before the Second World War was the arrival in the town of Sir Frank Bowater, Lord Mayor of London, who came to open the annex to the Royal Baths. He was greeted at Harrogate Station by the Mayor, members of the Corporation and many illustrious guests. A splendid procession was held through the town after the presentation of various poses, some of them rather reluctantly. Here you can see the great state Landau leaving the old Harrogate station. The tour passed through the town, the streets of which were lined with many people, passing here along West Park on its way to High Harrogate and the Queen Hotel, where a reception in honour of the Lord Mayor was held. And here is the procession along Crescent Road approaching the Royal Baths, which had been splendidly decorated for the occasion. A guard of honour was in position, which was inspected by Sir Frank Bowater before entering the building to perform the ceremony. You can see Sir Frank here up pausing on the steps, conversing with the architect, members of the corporation, before in inspecting the guard of honour. After the inspection, the London party entered the Royal Baths to view the new building, which included the handsome fountain court. This was intended for the public to relax after having had spa treatments. In 1954, the new mayor, Mayor Cristolo, in the company of the town clerk, were filmed in the procession through the town centre on their way to St Mary's Church for the mayoral service. Here they're approaching St Mary's Church preceded by the mace bearer, the town clerk, Mr. Neville Knox, and the mayor. Many famous members of Harrogate Corporation were present at this ceremony, as they were later in Station Parade, 
where the mayor took the march past on a special dais erected under Queen Victoria's monuments. In the background, underneath the trees of Station Parade, may be seen the old bus station and, to the right, the railway station. This area has, of course, changed considerably in recent years, but it's still possible to see the buildings in the distance, as here as they pass Betty's Cafe on Cambridge Crescent before heading into Christ Church for the ceremony. This procession was recorded later in the Mayor's period of office, as you can see from the trees and station parade. In the background, the old Harrogate Market, Standings Cafe, and the Mayor turns to Mr Neville Knox, the town clerk and the mace bearer, to pronounce that the procession has been a success. Note the two-way traffic in Station Parade. Moving now to Ripon, we see the famous ceremony of the horn blowing. This was to commemorate the visit of the Anglo-German delegation to Ripon. There are various folk dances and musical recitals that take place, and at one point a passing lorry appears to cast a comment upon the proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the citizens of this ancient city, the second oldest city in the kingdom, I offer you a hearty welcome on your visit here today. Fortunately, the photographer also took time to take these shots of some of the quiet streets of the old city of Ripon in the days before much of the traffic problems of modern life became apparent. Although there is still plenty of traffic around, at least in terms of the 1930s. This unique footage shows Knaresborough in 1939, the railway viaduct being crossed with carriages that have the old clestery type roof. As always at Knaresborough, it's waterside that is the most attractive part of the town for the visitors. This shot was taken only a few weeks before the outbreak of the Second World War. Here on the Harrogate Road, look out for the old drinking well, piped down from Bilton Spa, there, just beneath that building. The entrance to the Dropping Well Estate. 
Moving now to Harrogate, in the spring of 1958, Montpellier Hill covered in crocuses. The Prince of Wales roundabout, with the old Clarendon Hotel in the background at left, and the Prince of Wales at right. Harrogate's crocuses had been an established feature in the town for about 15 years. They were planted just after the Second World War in an attempt to beautify the approaches to the town. The great flower show in Harrogate, it's seen here in 1958, was a regular feature on the calendar. And it was visited by the Mayor and Mayoress of Harrogate, Councillor and Mrs Bernard Wood. The cherry trees on the stray by the railway line, then still in their infancy. Unlike these mature trees at the town centre, at the head of Parliament Street, with the splendid beds of tulips. Cambridge Crescent and the prospect to tell in the days before the stone was cleaned to reveal the beautiful architecture beneath. And here, two-way traffic on West Park. And in these days, the Grange Hotel still had its private flower gardens outside. Montpellier Gardens with the tulips. And in the background, the Café Imperial. and Boggs Field at the heart of Valley Gardens, the centre of the old Harrogate Spa. In 1929, the Duke of York had visited the Great Yorkshire Show, which was then held on the Harrogate Stray. But by 1958, the Yorkshire Show had its own permanent site. It had, however, extended considerably and was now a major feature on Harrogate's calendar. Here's a splendid ball. No sign of mad cow disease here. And you remember the Yorkshire penny bank? One of Harrogate's great attractions has always been its convenience for people wishing to visit the surrounding countryside. And these coaches leave Lower Montpellier Parade, passing the Crown Hotel roundabout, on their way to inspect some of the towns and villages around Harrogate. These trees, unfortunately, are no longer on Crown roundabout. Most of the other trees are still in position. 
although the buildings in the background have, fortunately, been cleaned. Two-way traffic on Montpellier Hill. The system is, of course, now one way only. And here we have Ripley, the first port of call for the visits. This appears to be market day at Ripley. There must be many people watching this who will perhaps recognize friends or relatives. And some maybe even have businesses in the heart of Ripley. Although a medieval village, Ripley was substantially remodelled in the early 19th century when one of the Ingleby family admired a particularly beautiful example of a French planned village and decided to bring back this inspiration to Yorkshire. Ripley as we see it today was a result of this happy inspiration in the early 19th century style. Bus services are no longer as frequent as they once were, unfortunately, something that time has not improved. And in the background, Ripley Castle. Moving now to Hampsthwaite, watch out for this lorry, so typical of the 1950s in its design, colouring and construction. Firstworth, another beautiful village within the former royal forest of Knaresborough. As in so many villages, the village shop is an important centre of social life. and Pateley Bridge, one of the most beautiful of all Yorkshire's towns, with a great wealth of fine architectural heritage. These empty streets are now something that is quite uncommon in Pateley Bridge. 
although few communities can boast two such fine churches in proximity. Look for the old railway carriages in the distance of this shot. Moving on to Studley Roger, listen now to Nora Brackenbury as she narrates this film. A mile-long avenue of gigantic limes stretches before us. The park also contains many fine examples of chestnuts, varied oaks and magnificent green and copper beeches. Large herds of red and fallow deer roam the park freely, as did their ancestors in medieval times. Statues in the grounds are copies from Greek and Roman sources depicting the gods and Roman wrestlers. Whilst reflected in the water is the Temple of Piety. By the western entrance, we see Fountains Hall, a fine example of Jacobean domestic architecture built in 1611. As the ruins testify, Fountains Abbey, at the time of its suppression, was one of the most magnificent and important monasteries in Great Britain. The tower, 171 feet high, was probably the loftiest ever erected by the Cistercian order. Here the coach arrives back in Harrogate at Low Montpellier Parade. Passing the Esplanade before it pulls round into St Mary's Walk to set down the passengers. Another successful outing. This film was recorded by Fred Brackenbury at the behest of the council to commemorate Harrogate's image as a floral town. 1958, the Leeds Road roundabout, covered in flowers, and two-way traffic on West Park. The floral tradition was continued right up to the heart of the town at the War Memorial a practice still observed to this day. And note again the dirty buildings in the days before stone cleaning was popular. And the canopy of the old railway station in Station Parade. 
Harrogate's bus station was always very well located next to the main station, seen here with its tree-lined surroundings. Luxury travel to Harrogate was afforded by means of the splendid Pullman service, seen here arriving at Harrogate Central Station. Perhaps some of the visitors had arrived to visit the splendid North of England flower show held in the Sun Pavilion and Sun Colonnade in Valley Gardens. The Sun Colonnade in particular was a popular venue for this kind of exhibition. The heart of Harrogate's floral experience must always be the Valley Gardens, seen here in the spring of 1958. Tulips, daffodils, crocuses and a host of other flowering plants. These were maintained by the corporation's expert gardeners. And at the heart of Valley Gardens, the world-famous Boggs Field, with its unique collection of mineral springs, some 36 in all, seen here taken from the children's paddling pool, looking across to the Royal Bath Hospital. The wellheads can be seen on the grass. Visitors to Harrogate have always been spoiled for choice with the wonderful shops, Marshall and Snell Groves in James Street, one of the greatest such stores, or Busby's in Parliament Street. And Parliament Street had a host of specialist shops too. This is now Brown's China Shop. Shops of Cambridge Crescent have also been an important part of the town's retailing activity. The Midland Bank, Allen's and Son, Bernard Mitchell Jewellers. Another important venue for many visitors to Harrogate was the Royal Hall, a splendid Edwardian theatre, popular for both musical activities, conferences and exhibitions. Here, the mayoral party passes the Royal Hall in order to lay a wreath at the Cenotaph. The Building Societies Association were only one of many conferences to meet in the Royal Hall. The Sun Pavilion was a regular place for mayors to hold their banquets. And here, you can see Bernard Wood, in 1958 in the Sun Pavilion in Valley Gardens. The Royal Hall has witnessed many famous people speaking and on this occasion we see the Prime Minister Sir Harold Macmillan climbing the entrance steps to be greeted by the Mayor Councillor Bernard Wood. He's about to step in first, but then realises protocol after you, and the mayor enters first. I know the ropes, says Sir Harold. Few resorts can match Harrogate's unrivaled collection of great hotels. The Majestic, the Cairn Hydro, the Old Swan, the Grange, now the Hospitality Inn, 
The Prospect, now the Imperial Hotel. At this time, Harrogate's famous Crown Hotel still had not been derequisitioned by the government. The Valley Drive hotels were always important. The Langham. And the Valley Gardens Hotel. And of course, many visitors came to sample Harrogate Springs. Officially, there were 88 in the town. Many of them used at the famous Royal Baths, the world's most advanced center for hydrotherapy. The Fountain Court within the Royal Baths, a much loved feature of life in Harrogate, then only 20 years old. In later years, this walk was to be named after Sir Edward Elgar, a regular visitor to Harrogate before 1927. The Elgar walk is lined with trees, shrubs, flowers and a stream. And in the background, the dome of the Hotel Majestic. Many of these visitors were heading towards the Sun Pavilion with its popular cafe. Harrogate has always been keen to foster ties with countries beyond the shores of Great Britain. And here visitors from Scandinavia demonstrate their native dances in Valley Gardens. The children's paddling pool has been another one of the Valley Gardens attractions for many years and this is just within a stone's throw of the famous Boggs Field with its mineral springs. Can you see yourself there? These children would no doubt have appreciated one of the biggest events held in Harrogate, the Toy Fair. But this of course was just for buyers and dealers, members of the public were not allowed into the building. Many of these toys may well now be valuable collector's pieces.
French Week was started after the Second World War as a means of fostering good relations with Harrogate's twin town, Mouchon. For two weeks in the summer, Crescent Gardens was filled with life, art exhibitions, displays by dancers, and pavement cafes. Many of these were enjoyed by visitors to the town's exhibition and conference centre, as well as other foreign guests. And here the waiters race, all down Parliament Street, into Crescent Gardens, for the winner to be announced in front of the municipal buildings. And after the race, what better than a pavement cafe opposite the Royal Baths? Or the cycle race? Still an event in Harrogate's calendar. Here the cyclists leave Swan Road. Heading for Oak Beck with its two steep hills. Note the hole in the bridge, made perhaps by a passing motorist. The return journey down Valley Drive past James Miles' bookshop, just opposite the entrance to Valley Gardens, before curving round into Swan Road. Note the loudspeaker van in front of the art gallery. But then the art gallery wasn't the art gallery when this was taken. It was the rates office. In the 1870s, the world's first cyclists touring club met in Harrogate, a fact commemorated by a plaque in Crescent Gardens. From time to time, the stray is used to exhibit a wide variety of vehicles, from buses to antique and veteran cars. And here, the mayoress of Harrogate is seen inspecting a model. One of Harrogate's many established horticultural customs has been the growing of these splendid dahlias in Valley Gardens, which are always a great source of attraction to visitors. Descending Parliament Street, we pass the Café Imperial, today Betty's Café. Note the two-way traffic in Parliament Street, the Somerset Hotel on the left, the splendid canopy of glass and iron of W.H. Smith on the right, and Busby's store, the electricity showrooms on the left, then the original Georgian buildings, the entrance to the gardens to the Royal Bath Estate, and of course Montpellier Gardens itself. No matter how you come to Harrogate, whether it is by train, bus or car, you will be greeted by flowers practically all the year round 
and the perfume from the gardens is ever present. Harrogate is set like a jewel, right in the centre of Great Britain, and can be reached easily from all parts of the realm. The fine hotels at which you stay provide a service which is second to none. They can cater from the smallest party to the largest conference in comfort, luxury and elegance. All the year round, a staff of skilled gardeners employed by Harrogate maintain the splendour of the gardens to delight the visitor and provide solace for those in need of quiet relaxation. The centre of the town is located at this war memorial and from here radiate the roads which lead to the shopping area. All around the town are these lovely garlands of bright flowers and the visitor cannot go very far in Harrogate without seeing beds and displays which surpass all expectations. One is constantly tempted to sit in the wonderful sun and relax. Shopping is a delightful experience in Harrogate. A unique feature of Harrogate is the stray, this green parkland, which must be kept free of all development for all time, is available to young and old for quiet walks and games. The trees which surround this stray provide adequate protection from the sun, and visitors may stroll and enjoy the invigorating air in surroundings of pastoral beauty within a stone's throw of busy streets and shops. Grown-ups enjoy the music of the orchestra in the Sun Pavilion. And in this atmosphere of music, perfume and warm sun, relax in the comfort of a deep chair, or take coffee or tea served with quiet efficiency by a pleasant waitress. Indeed, in Harrogate, it's certainly not music while you work. The garden at Harlow Carr, Harrogate, were founded in 1950 by the Northern Horticultural Society for the propagation and testing of seeds and plants in a northern atmosphere. Member subscriptions and visitors donations providing the finance for the upkeep. Borders running the full length of the gardens contain some fine varieties of flowering shrubs. Possibly May and June being the best months to see the greater number in bloom. When buying the more expensive plants, such as the herbaceous or perennials for one's own garden, a prior visit to Harlow Carr is very rewarding in that one is able to see the plants growing and note height, colour and habit. For many of these visitors to Harrogate, the first and last sight of the town would have been through the old railway station, which in 1958 was still in its original Victorian condition, complete with a splendid canopy over the forecourt. The spacious entrance hall with a display board and great cast iron steps going over the lines. On the other side of which, the tracks to York and the north of England. And here, a steam train on the way to Leeds passes under the Victoria Avenue railway bridge. Here, 
a diesel train along the same route towards Leeds. This site is now covered by Safeway's store. One of the most prestigious ways of arriving in Harrogate by rail was with the Pullman, seen here arriving at Harrogate station. Watch out for this visitor tipping the porter. Thank you, ma'am. And then there was the search for another porter, for the luggage and perhaps a taxi outside the station. In the distance can be seen the bus station and the trees of station parade. Harrogate Station's goods depot was always a very busy part of the town. Perhaps you remember these characteristic cream and red trucks, which were once such a sight on the town streets. Here, in Oxford Street, they try to negotiate a traffic choke pavement. In the background, the British School of Motoring and the Harrogate General Post Office. And the main parcels office at Harrogate Railway Station. Even by 1965, this parcels truck has a distinctly old-fashioned look. Our final film, Harrogate Boardroom of the North, has been left with its original, upbeat and confident soundtrack, as it is such a commentary on the outlook of the times. Many of our industrial cities are finding it increasingly difficult to meet the growing demand for more space. Companies are being forced to look elsewhere for the siting of new experimental and executive quarters. No easy task when such places must also satisfy the high living standards of top personnel. It was to assess our town's suitability as a site for his company's new headquarters that Alex Fielding, a senior executive with his firm, and his wife Jenny travelled to Harrogate. The couple left London reluctantly, far from anxious to live in what they'd always thought of as the industrial north. Parking, for instance, that national headache is simplicity itself here. We inaugurated a free disc parking system a few years ago, which has been enormously successful. Much civic pride is felt in our new indoor swimming pool, which is acknowledged to be one of the finest in the country. Tastefully set in its own grounds, the attractively designed modern building incorporates many new features. Inside, there are separate pools for learners and divers, which have proved to be immensely popular. There is another entirely different facet of the town. Harrogate is one of the country's leading exhibition centres, providing virtually unrivaled facilities. The main exhibition centre is really empty. This conference audience, for example, were able to view a most attractive display of the very latest styles in men's clothing. The corporation, well versed in such matters by now, offer every possible assistance to exhibition organisers. Nothing is left undone that would contribute to the successful staging of such events. The variety of uses the centre is put to each year is rapidly expanding. Hand in hand with the old walks the new, yet blended so skillfully that one complements rather than opposes the other. Certainly it is not possible to purchase antiques in this emporium, but it is possible to purchase almost every other clothing and household item here, and at the same time save quite a considerable amount of money with the store's dividend stamp scheme. The essential essence of the town will always be preserved and carefully planned development will enhance rather than detract from Harrogate's basic dignity and charm.